The book of Proverbs chapter 15, verse 16, better is little with the fear of Yahweh than great treasure and trouble therewith. All right, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rahakwadash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father and the Holy Tongue. Yahweh Shai is the true name of the King and Savior of Israel. And Rahakwadash is the Holy Spirit, which is the Comforter. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for leading by example in these last days. And Shalom to the hopeful elect. Are you Akiyam making your bodies a living sacrifice? Now, through the Spirit, the name of this lesson is Fear is Greater Than Love. And I just want to touch on how a lot of our people say that they love the Lord, they love Jesus, they love God, they love this and that. But when you look at their daily behavior, when you look at their belief system that governs their daily behavior, it's clear that they hate the Heavenly Father. Not only do they not know what love is, but they also have absolutely no fear of the Most High. And fear is a great motivator. Fear is actually a much stronger motivator than love is because a person can say that they love you. A person can have uh, lovey-dovey feelings when your name comes up. A person can have a particular emotion, but if they don't fear you, that's not going to govern their behavior. When you fear something, if a, if a lion were to walk in the room right now, you wouldn't love that lion, but the fear of the lion would cause you to move immediately. And without fear, the vast majority of these people, their minds are not towards righteousness in any way, shape, or form, but they love God so much. They love the Lord so much. They're, they say with their lips, matter of fact, let me start with that. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 13. Wherefore, Yahweh said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear, their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. And that goes into these different philosophies and people mangling the scriptures and telling our people what they want to hear. Because as it is written, our people love to hear smooth things. They want to be told everything's going to be okay. They want to be told that it's okay to break the commandments. That's done away with. The law was nailed to the cross, which is not anywhere in the scriptures. They want to teach you that it's okay to eat whatever you want to eat, live however you want to live. And as long as you love God, as long as you confess your love for the sweet Jesus, everything's going to be okay. And that's completely insane. But this is actually a passage that Yahweh quoted in Matthew the 15th chapter. These people draw near the Most High with their mouth, which is that's all love is in this society. Love is an emotion. It's a lovey-dovey, feel-good thing, and it doesn't cause people to repent. A lot of times, it doesn't even cause people to realize what they're doing is wrong. If you walk up to a sodomite and tell him that God loves him because God loves everybody, why would he change? Why would he think about what he's doing? If someone's an adulterer, a murderer, an idolater, you, we live in a society right now where the First Amendment is in complete contradiction to the First Commandment. You're not supposed to put any gods above Yahweh, but we live in a society where the First Amendment allows you to worship whatever god you want. And so-called Christians, are they're totally okay with that, man. You ask a so-called Christian, is it okay for somebody to be a Muslim? Is it okay for somebody to worship Satan? Is it okay for somebody to worship any god they want? They'll have this passive-aggressive response to idolatry, which is a sin unto death. But if you tell them, look, the Most High is going to kill you if you worship an idol, the Most High is going to destroy you and your family if you continue in this madness, that elicits a completely different response. Telling someone that God loves everybody is poison. You're poisoning someone's mind. Now, a lot of these so-called Christians, they have good intentions. What they want to do is they want to convince the person that they're talking to that no matter what they do, God still loves them. But they're leaving out the part that they have to repent or else the Lord is going to destroy them. They just say God loves everybody, which is completely insane. The Most High doesn't love everybody. He loves the nation of Israel, starting with the elect that repent and believe on his son. That's the world in John 3, 16, not everybody. So they're mangling the scriptures and then they're pushing this love, love, love doctrine, but they don't even tell people what love is. What is love according to the Bible, first and foremost? Let me get this real quick. This is 1 John chapter 5, verse 3. For this is the love of the Most High. This is the love of the Most High, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Now, you could be in church for 80 years. They're never going to tell you what the love of the Most High is. They're going to tell you God loves everybody. You're supposed to love God. God is love, 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 love. But they don't even explain what love is. Love is the keeping of the commandments. And you can't keep the commandments without fear. 
you have to fear the wrath of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai in order to keep the commandments because there's no earthly secular reward. Now, keeping the commandments will improve your life. If you stick to the dietary law, you're going to be healthier than someone that eats abomination every day. If you stick to the marriage laws of the Bible, you're going to prolong your life because adultery is eventually going to lead you to a disease or perhaps getting put to death by someone that's in a rage of jealousy. So the commandments will improve your life if you fear the Lord. But at the end of the day, these people don't, they don't understand that there's a cause and effect. They don't fully understand the gravity of what they do when they sin. As it is written, we suffer because of our sins. These people don't have a full understanding of long-term consequences. As it is written, they would be wise if they understood their latter end. If you knew what you were doing would cause a certain response five years down the line, 10 years down the line, something that will cause harm to your children, something that will cause you to come back in the reincarnation in a totally messed up state, people wouldn't live the way that they're living. There's no way. But there's no wisdom in these people. Why? Because fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Let me get that real quick before I continue. This is this is the book of Proverbs, chapter 9, verse 10. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the holy is understanding. Right? So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So if you don't fear the Lord, you don't have any understanding of what's going on. You don't have wisdom, which wisdom is the proper application of knowledge. The knowledge that you need to obtain, first and foremost, is the knowledge of who you are, which if you're an Israelite, you people of so-called Negro and Native Indian descent, you're the 12 tribes of Israel. Knowledge of who you are is going to lead you to do what? What is the way of an Israelite? Now that I find out I'm an Israelite, what am I supposed to do? Then you go into the scriptures. Let me, let me get that real quick. This is... Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And now, O Israel, what doth Yahweh thy power require of thee? So I'm an Israelite. What, what does the Lord require of an Israelite? The very first thing it says, to fear Yahweh, to fear, not love, to fear Yahweh thy power, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve Yahweh with all thy heart and with all thy soul. So you see, fear comes first in the equation. Again, wisdom is the proper application of knowledge. Knowledge of who you are leads you to your culture. It leads you to your heritage, which are the law, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father, which is our wisdom in the sight of the nation. So going back to wisdom, you have to fear the Lord, and that's the beginning of wisdom. Now, who does the Lord love? Let me get that real quick. This is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 28. For the Most High loveth none... The Most High loveth none but him that dwell with wisdom. So the only way for you to be loved by the Father is for you to have wisdom. And fear of the Father is the beginning of wisdom. So the love comes after the fear. Fear is first, and then the love comes. This society pushes love, 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 and they completely leave fear out of the equation. But then they'll turn around and tell you that you're going to go to hell and burn for eternity forever, which is complete madness, man. How could it? First of all, why would a God that loves everybody create a place to burn people forever. That's completely insane. Did, when you really break down what these people claim to believe, not only is it psychotic, but it's evident by their behavior that they don't even believe in this madness. If you believe that there was a place where you burn for eternity, <laughs> your behavior would change immediately. But these people don't believe in that, man. This is this is back in Sirach because I want to show that uh, fear comes before love. Fear is the first step. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 19, verse 18. The fear of Yahweh is the first step is the first step to be accepted of him and wisdom obtaineth his love. And that's the spirit, man. We just read in our wisdom of Solomon that the Lord doesn't love anybody except them that dwell with wisdom. Let me read this again. This is Sirach 19 and 18. It says the fear of Yahweh is the first step to be accepted of him and wisdom obtaineth his love. So you have to have the fear first. The fear is going to lead you to the knowledge and wisdom. The wisdom is going to bring you love of the father. So the fear comes first. The fear is the first step. Let me get this. This is Sirach chapter 25, verse 12. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of his love and faith is the beginning of cleaving unto him. So the fear is the beginning of his love. You don't start with love and then later on, well, you know, I might fear that. No, you have to start with the fear. That's why the scripture tells you in Corinthians, let me get this. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Right, we persuade men through terror, through the prophecies. Look, Babylon the Great is about to be destroyed. Where is Babylon the Great? Where you're standing right now. If you're in America right now, you're in the place prophesied in the Holy Scriptures to be completely wiped off the face of the earth through fire. So that moves you through fear. 
It's very rare that you see a Hebrew Israelite camp, especially Great Millstone, just stand on the sidewalk and talk about love for two hours. Now we do go into the fact that you're supposed to have love for your brother. You have to have love for your neighbor. That's what? A commandment. You have to love your neighbor as yourself. That's part of our culture. But that comes after the fear. If you tell someone, look, you're supposed to love your neighbor, but you don't tell them that they're an Israelite. You don't tell them that it's a commandment to love their neighbor. And you don't tell them that there's a, a consequence for not loving your neighbor. Then what you're doing is ultimately it's a circle jerk. You're just putting on a show to feel good about yourself, to say, well, you're, I'm a righteous person. I, I preach love. I push love to everybody. I'm a, it's a very self-serving, disingenuous way to push the word. And really, you're not pushing the word. You're taking away from the word. And there's a consequence to that when you read Revelation, the 22nd chapter. But I want to get this. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 6. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of Yahweh, men depart from evil, right? So you depart from evil through fear. You don't depart from evil through love. Loving someone doesn't cause you to not transgress them. You have people that are married for years that love each other, but they still lie to each other. They still give each other STDs. They still step out on their marriage. Love doesn't prevent you from harming someone. Fear does. When you go into the gospels, the wife is commanded to fear her husband and the husband is commanded to love the wife. Let me get that real quick. I want to get back to this Proverbs, but Let's bring this out. This is the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. So Apostle Paul is telling the men to love their wives. And what does he tell the wife? And the wife see that she reverence, reverence her husband. Now, when you go into this word reverence in the Greek, it's phobia. It means to put to flight by terrifying, to fear to be afraid, to reverence, to venerate, to treat with deference or reverential obedience, to be seized with alarm. So the Israelite woman is commanded to fear her husband, to reverence him, and the man is commanded to love the wife. That's the order. So when you go into the scriptures, it tells you what? That we're the wife of the heavenly father. He tells you in Jeremiah, the sixth chapter in the second verse, that he's likened Israel unto a calmly and delicate woman. Let me get this real quick. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 54, verse 5. For thy maker is thy husband. Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, is his name. So we're actually married unto the heavenly father. And he sent his only begotten son to join us back unto the father. That's why he's referred to as the bridegroom. So if we're the wife of the Lord and wives are commanded to reverence their husband, you're supposed to fear the Lord, man. That's Fear is the beginning of wisdom, not love. Fear is greater than love. Fear causes you to not violate, to not transgress. Love doesn't do that. A wife can say she loves you and then commit adultery like five minutes later. What's wild is that she can honestly mean it. But a woman that fears her husband, that fears the consequences, hey, she's going to think twice, man. She's going to think three times. She's going to think four times. She's not even going to do it. A woman that fears, let me read that again. This is phobia. This is Strong's G 5399. This is the word reverence. When the scriptures say wives reverence your husbands, it says to put to flight by terrifying, to fear, to be afraid, to reverence, venerate, to treat with deference or reverential obedience, to be seized with alarm. Now, a woman that feels that way about her husband is not going to transgress while saying, I love you. A woman that genuinely loves her husband but has no fear is going to do anything, man. She's liable to. But getting back to the scriptures, it says, this is Proverbs 16 and 6. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of Yahweh, men depart from evil, right? Fear is what causes you to depart from evil, all right? It tells you in, what is it, Ecclesiastes 8 and 11, though sentence is not executed speedily, therefore is it in the sons of men to do wickedness because you don't see a consequence, you don't see a judgment for you breaking the laws. But then when you come into the truth, the first thing you read, okay, Deuteronomy 28, there is a consequence. The consequence was hardcore chattel slavery. The consequence was the transatlantic slave trade. The consequence was these heathen being put up above us. There is a consequence for sin. And it's grave. It's gravely serious when you transgress the laws of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. It's not a light thing. And that comes with fear. That doesn't come with love. A lot of our people have been saying that they love the Most High. They love God their whole life. But what changed you? What caused you to repent? The fear. What caused you to completely turn around your whole life, put away all your wicked hobbies, stop celebrating these wicked holidays, completely become a new person? That started with the fear. That's why it tells you in Corinthians, through the terror of the Lord, we persuade men.
Now this is back in Sirach chapter 1 verse 20. The root of wisdom is to fear Yahweh, and the branches thereof are a long life. The fear of Yahweh driveth away sins. The fear of Yahweh driveth away sins, and where it is present, it turneth away wrath. Right, when you fear Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, that turns his wrath away from you, man. If you have a master and he's austere, he's very strict, He's violent at times and you don't take him seriously at all. You tell him you love him, but you don't fear him at all. And he sees that you don't fear him. His wrath is going to be kindled. It's like, okay, you don't take me seriously. Okay, I, I got something for you. But when you actually show that you fear someone and you bow your head to them and you let them know, like, look, you got this, you got this. That's sort of, let me read it again. It says, the fear of Yahweh drives away sins, which sin is the transgression of the law. When you fear the Lord, it drives away your transgressions. It says, and where it is present it turneth away wrath. So when you show the Lord that you fear him, you actually turn away wrath. Let me get this. This is Sirach chapter two, verse 17. They that fear Yahweh will prepare their hearts and humble their souls in his sight. Right, when you fear someone, you're humbled in their sight. A woman that fears her husband is gonna be humble when he comes around, even when he's not around. When you fear someone, you don't wanna transgress them even when they leave the room, even when they leave your presence. But when you love somebody, when they're around, you feel warm, you feel comfortable. But when they leave, it's like, okay, I still love them, but hey, they're not here right now. When you fear someone, even when they're not around, you think twice about transgressing them. It says, let me read verse 15. It says, they that fear Yahweh will not disobey his word. Right, when you fear someone, you obey them. That Fear and obedience go hand in hand. If you fear someone, if you fear the consequences of what someone can do to you, then you're going to obey them. That goes hand in hand. And when you see somebody that's disobedient, what does that mean? They don't fear. That's all that means, really. People could say this and say that, come with different words and make up a million excuses. But at the end of the day, disobedience is a lack of fear. That's the only thing that means. And let me get this real quick in Malachi. I referenced this, but this... The scripture makes it plain. This is the book of Malachi, chapter one, verse six. A son honoreth his father and a servant his master. If I be a father, where is mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Right. So if the Lord is your master, where's your fear? If you have a boss and you don't want to get fired, you're going to fear. You're going to do what he says. You're going to show up on time. He gets on you. You're going to listen, man. People fear their boss more than they fear Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, the creator of heaven and earth. They fear their woman more than they fear Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. They fear the government. They fear everything except the man that created their spirit, man. It's, it's disgusting, man. When you abide in the love of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, it's, it's vexing to be around these people that don't fear. It's like you, it's just like a job. Again, if you're at a job where a group of people respect the boss and then you have this guy who's like a total clown, he doesn't take anything serious. As soon as the boss leaves, he starts acting up. He starts breaking stuff, stealing stuff. It's like, okay, I care about this job and you don't. So now we're at variance because you can end up stealing something in front of me. And now I look crazy. That's going to create variance. He's going to look at you like, why do you respect this guy? And you're going to look at him like, what the hell is wrong with you, man? You're going to get us all fired. So there's a variance between people that fear the most high and people that don't. When you fear Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, these people are like, what, what is wrong with you? You're worshiping an invisible sky daddy? You're following a book written by men? They look at us like we're crazy. The whole time we're looking at them like, you fucking idiot. You don't fear Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You don't fear the man that stops the ocean from just completely consuming the land. You don't fear the man that set up the bases of men over the earth and he's going to completely destroy this man and take him out of power. You don't fear somebody like that. You don't fear a power that declared the end from the beginning. Somebody that said he's going to do something thousands of years in the future and then did it. You don't fear somebody like like we look at each other. That's why the scripture says the uh, the unjust man is an abomination to the just and vice versa. We look at each other like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? And they're looking at us like, what, what's wrong with these? Niggas? They believe in the Bible in 2021. Yes. Yes. We fear Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. We fear his word. We fear his priest, man. We reverence. Scripture tells you fear Yahweh and reverence his priest. That that all comes with fear, not love. People can say they love anything. The Catholic Church, they're all about love, man. They love little boys. They love little girls. They just, they're an international pedophile ring. And that comes with what? Love and no fear. Anyone that fears the Lord is not going to harm a child. That's completely, you're a sick spirit, man. If you're sodomizing children, man, that's like, there's no fear at all. There's no fear in the land. That's why this place is going to be destroyed with such a vicious destruction because of the lack of fear. It's not a lack of love. These people love everything, man. They 
pansexual to people marrying trees, marrying themselves. People like lo <laughs> love is just completely gone overboard, man. Why? Because their love is not according to the love of the scriptures. They have that strange love, that weirdo love. The love of the scriptures is the keeping of the commandments, and that comes with fear. So let me end with this. This is Oh, let me get this real quick. It goes with the point. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 13. The fear of Yahweh is to hate evil. And that's another reason we know that these people don't fear the Lord. They don't hate evil. When you push a doctrine of love, 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 God loves everybody. So you're supposed to love everybody. You're supposed to accept anything. You're supposed to not judge anybody. This whole doctrine of Christianity teaches you to accept evil, to tolerate evil, to make excuses for evil. But the scripture says what? The fear of Yahweh is to hate evil. You're supposed to hate evil, man. That's a... That's mind blowing to a so-called Christian. The idea that you're supposed to hate, that the most high hates an entire race of people, that the most high is going to use his chosen people to eradicate that race off the face of the earth. The idea that you're supposed to hate evil, man, that's that's a foreign concept to these people. Why? Because they don't fear Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So let me end on this. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 34, verse nine. Oh, fear Yahweh, ye his saints. For there is no want to them that fear him, right? There's no want when you fear Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. When you fear the Lord, you don't have time for all these other emotions. You don't have time for wanting to make it in the world and getting your rap career to jump off and doing this and doing that. You're not turned a million different ways. You're turned to the commandments. You're turned to the prophecies. You're turned to wanting to get the hell out of here and establish the kingdom of heaven. That's what you're turned to. Your eye is made single through the fear of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So Abaratazada's lesson was edifying. I want to give all praises honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rahakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the hopeful elect.